Shalom. This is Mary Omni from the World Government House of King David, Holy Covenant Constitutional Enforcer. This is a Republic Notice. The title of this Republic Notice is called Why President Obama is Fatal for the Gay and LGBT Agenda. Why President Obama is Fatal for the Gay and LGBT Agenda. Okay, there's a lot of things in the news, but today I heard in the news that President Obama had signed two executive orders for to halt the discrimination of gays, LBT, and the transvestite or transsexuals. Now, there's a qu couple other things in the news that I feel as though relate to this. So bear with me. One of them is this black man was killed by New York cops who cut off his breath, breath put him in a chokehold. He had five children and um, a wife or, you know, two, two women or whatever he had the five children by. And the other one is a, a woman is being charged with neglecting her child because she let her play in the park by herself at nine years old while she worked at McDonald's. Now, before I get to them two stories, now I'm going to tell you how this relates to President Obama executive orders today. This black man being uh, murdered by New York cops and this black woman being charged with possible child neglect. But let's start with the executive orders President Obama did today, July 21st, 2014, and why this is fatal for the gay and LGBT agenda. Now, everyone wants to pretend that the Constitution don't exist. Everyone wants to pretend that we just have public laws, that there is no republic. You know, a lot of Caucasians in corporate doctrines who've been serving the public and fighting for public land rights, public schools, public housing, public this, public that, they swear they own the public and they want to own the public by their majority in corporate doctrine vote. But now they're trying to say they're the republic. See, they want to fit whatever fits their nose at whatever particular time is their law. Whatever little box their nose wants is, and they smell is whatever they want. That takes us to LBGT and the gay and homosexual agenda, not only domestically, nationally, but internationally. And President Obama is trying to lead this. And I'm going to tell you why he's the worst president and the fatal, most fatal president for the LGBT agenda in America. Now, First of all, when we look at the, the homosexual agenda, we can look at the disparity between white homosexuals and black homosexuals. It's a vast, vast, vast disparity. Uh, in income, housing, quality of life, quality of medical care, quality of education, and everything. And haven't you noticed that a lot of people are having a Britain accent here? The reason I'm saying Britain, because a lot of these homosexuals are from Britain. And there seems to be a flood of Britain accents. A flood of Britain accents. And so it's these same Britain accents as part of this homosexual push also behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, within the scenes. Now, the reason he's the worst president is because we have uh, for the uh, LBGT and gay agenda is because we have for the first time since 1877 uh, a constitutional uh, family in the White House. Everyone knows Michelle Obama is a constitutional citizen. Mary Ellen Robinson is a constitutional citizen. Her brother Craig is a constitutional citizen, which means Craig is Craig Robinson, who's also a basketball coach, is the 15th Amendment. Uh, Michelle and Mary Robinson is the 14th Amendment. And President Obama was, is an adopted son under the 13th Amendment. What do they all have in common? Well, Mary Ellen Robinson is the supreme contractor of non-consent jurisdiction. Non-consent jurisdiction. The whole jurisdiction of the Constitution was changed in 1865. The jurisdiction is non-consent because three-fifths couldn't consent to even be put in the Constitution. And so once a non-consenter, always a non-consenter, three-fifths could not consent. Therefore, the cosmic placenta, which is 60, the sesex decimal system uh, that was uh, created by the Sumerians and the Dogon tribe will tell you about this 60 also. But the three-fifths is the 60. And they weren't consider, considered legal contractors because Dred Scott was told he had no legal rights to consent because he was considered three-fifths. So a non-consenter by the Constitutional Supreme Court, because all this was prior to the U.S. Corporation of 1871. <clears throat> In a nutshell, the executive orders President Obama signed, his brother-in-law, Craig Robinson, and his mother-in-law and his wife has non-consent jurisdiction to. So if he signed for gays and uh, lesbians or transvestites not to be discriminated against, it was a... It was a signature of non-consent. The non-consent. Now you can say, okay, non-consent to discrimination. No, non-consent to them having any constitutionality. Because before you can be protected, you have to have constitutionality. So the non-consent was the 14th, the non-consent, the black infant equal rights amendment to be used 
by gays who try to pretend that all persons born could be born from two men or two women. The constitutional nonsense that, and so did all the black voters in Proposition 8 who voted yes. They voted non-consent jurisdiction to any kind of gay marriage, gay rights, or anything. Because what they voted that they had no constitutionality. So anything President Obama signs, he signs for them not to touch constitutional wealth based on a gay agenda. Okay? Non-consent jurisdiction means that consenting gays have no rights in government, housing, education, or anything else. They had because what Thurgood Marshall told you is there's no separate but equal. There is no separate but equal constitutionally. Now, the simple fact is there's no gay amendment in the Constitution. There is nothing about any gay or homosexual in any amendment in the Constitution from 1 to 27. There is nothing about a gay amendment or homosexual or LGBT. So this is outside of the Constitution. And Third Good Marshall said there's no separate but equal. If it's outside the Constitution, that means it's separate from the Constitution. So there's no separate or, but equal as proven in the Board of Education. So therefore, to two executive orders President Obama signed, sign non-consent to any equality in any government jobs and any uh, federal funding, non-consent for them to have any equal rights to any constitutionalities based on a gay or homosexual lifestyle or agenda where they're seeking more income or anything. Because the non-consent is the non-consent that there's no separate but equal. This is why President Obama is fatal <laughs> to the uh, gay and LGBT because it's just a matter of the truth getting out. And the truth is, there is no separate but equal. And President Obama executive orders, when he signed that, he's in non-consent jurisdiction. He's surrounded by non-consenters. His, his wife, his brother-in-law, and his mother-in-law are all non-consenters, actuality, by constitution, which means they're God sovereign. So he's trapped no matter what he do. His intentions may have been to uh, promote this for whatever, for worldly, for Satanism, whatever. But what he do, everything he does is backfiring now because the Gentiles' time is coming to a close. And whether he want to serve the Constitution or not, any signature he signed, no matter how funky he tries to get with our government wealth, it's a signature of non-consent. So this is a warning. He didn't consent any rights to any gays, transsexual, or homosexuals, no matter what you heard. There is no rights whatsoever. And even on the Supreme Court, there is no same-sex marriage because he had two non-consent jurisdictions on the Supreme Court. So all he did was pound the gays over the head. Every time he signed a signature, anything for the gay or the homosexual agenda, he cut them short contractually. Now, you can say, well, we're going to run over this contract, but it's not going to be as easy as you think running over this contract. Not anymore, because let me tell you something. I'm on the front line. People wonder where I've been. I'm on the front line, and I'm telling you, your wicked spirits in high places are falling. You're going to be left on your own in this chaos here. You're not going to have the power. So President Obama punched your ass all in his face, whether he knew he was punching you in the face or not. He's cutting you all too short to crap. And guess what? He ain't. He's not going to be able to go back, because once it's non-consent jurisdiction, that transsexual and gays have no right in government, it's permanent. Once it's non-consent, his executive orders, they become law because they're protected by non-consent jurisdiction. So whatever rights gays are supposed to have, it was never consented. It was already preemptively nullified. It was already preemptively nullified because you can take it for a joke that there's no separate but equal, but contractually you're going to serve this constitution. The constitution protects itself. I'm tired of y'all insulting our constitutional writers and reconstruction. If they way smarter than any of you MFers on earth on the planet now, they was way, I mean, eons ahead of a President Obama or a worldly agenda. They, the bankers couldn't even compete with them. They all Johnny come lately trying to pull it off. Satan had to invite the world in to gang up on blacks who our constitutional writers made citizens. He said, give me, they Satan said, give me a tired, poor, and hungry. But the tired, poor, and hungry was really here. But he didn't like the fact they had constitutionality. So he invited the world to gang up on him. And this is a world of now trying to create a world system of this gay to look or overlook the black holocaust. But you're not going to overlook the black holocaust. The karma is imminent. Those who consented to slavery will go into slavery. Now, this relates to this black man that was killed by the top cops, because while he's pretending he's going to hijack uh, 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 and, and create some kind of law for some gay, which he smacked down. The Constitution smacks President Obama down. It smacks him down each and everything he signed. He smacked the hell down. I, the Constitution does. Don't blame me, because our constitutional writers, 
and reconstructionists was eyeing ahead of the game. They saw him coming and they saw the whole agenda coming and they beat you to the punch and they whipped, your, whipped everybody in this, uh, uh, in, whoever tried to challenge our constitution, you all are whipped silly. You're nothing but dumb contractors of incorporate doctrine, abomination of desolation debtors and that's all you ever be. You can squat on here like any animal. You're nothing but squatters, okay? Now, the real citizens, that black man who was messed up by the New York cops and murder, th th is, let me tell you, give me your warning, cops. You're not going to be able to get away with this no more. Your children will pay, you will pay, and you will fill it within your bodies. You're going to pay. Blacks are becoming untouchable, whether you believe it or not. Now, if you want to lose your life and you want your children gone, keep messing with the constitutional citizens and taking their life. Because guess what? You will lose yours and your children's in the process, okay? You will find yourself in the hospital sooner or later and you ain't going to know what hit you, okay? Because we're under a new earth love life and Adam's not taking none of BS no more. And for this woman who her nine-year-old daughter, this is a matter of them trying to overlook, like I said, ignore the Constitution. Why should she have to work at McDonald's and then be uh, put in a position or put her daughter in the park? Give her her social security check. Give her daughter her social security check. Give all blacks their social security check. If you got enough money for all these imports in here coming across the border, get black people, get off of blacks' constitutional wealth. They all are deserving of their social security check. Social security is theirs because it's under non-consent jurisdiction. And if you ain't got enough for them, then you ain't got nothing for nobody else by supreme constitutionality now you keep masturbating in your evil mediocrity thinking you're going to get away with this because guess what you're going to find out the hard way and um we supposed to have enough money for social security and for same-sex marriage and enough to accommodate all this influx from central and south america talking about billions three and four and five billion dollars well guess what any executive order three and four and five billion dollars that president obama signed that means any government agency that's given anybody else besides that black infant, that black woman, and that black constitutional man, that three or four or five billion dollars for no child left behind, for housing, for health care, for education. If that money is going to all other than that, then you're criminals. Because I'm going to tell you, President Obama cannot get over on the Constitution. See, he's under non-consent jurisdiction. He's trapped by non-consenters, whether he like it or not. So anything he signed, he signed non-consent to Babylon. Anything President Obama signs, he's signing non-consent to Babylon. Anything President Obama signs, he's signing non-consent to Babylon. So you want to act like you don't know Babylon? You will be criminals. And guess what? You will strip your children naked, and they will be bare naked. Now you act like you don't know what the F I'm talking about. So it is said, so shall it be. This day, July the 21st, 2014. These are exclusive images of Michelle Obama last night, speaking at an exclusive fundraiser hosted by a lesbian couple at their Tony Washington, D.C. home. She was giving an impassioned speech on one of her favorite topics, children. They are counting on us to give them the chances they need for the futures they deserve. But one woman in the crowd wanted to talk about something else, gay rights. It's hard to hear, but that's Ellen Sturtz. Sturtz is from the activist group Get Equal. She interrupts the first lady to ask her why the president hasn't signed an executive order that would bar a company that does business with the federal government from discriminating for sexual orientation or gender equity. It didn't go over well with Mrs. Obama or the crowd. And I don't care what you believe in. We don't. Wait, wait, wait. wait. One, one of the things I one of the things that I don't do well is this. I can take the mic, but I'm leaving. So you all decide. No, I'm sure. No, no. I need your husband. I need your husband. You have one choice. All right, you guys. No. No, please don't leave. No. She made her way back to the podium to make her point. So let me make the point that I was making before. We are here for our kids. Someone in a sense verbally got in her face and she didn't like it. Lynn Sweet is the Washington bureau chief of the Chicago Sun-Times and she's covered the Obamas for years. I think Mrs. Obama is very disciplined. She rarely goes off script. She rarely puts herself in a position where she could have something happen unexpected. The first lady's unscripted response was different than how her more practiced well, husband yeah, tends to handle lady, hecklers like he did just two weeks ago during a major foreign policy speech at National Defense University.
Now, this, this is part of free speech, is you being able to speak, but also you listening, and me being able to speak. Right? A softer touch, maybe, than Michelle's tough talk, but today the White House gave her performance a rave review. It's my personal opinion that she handled it brilliantly.